Interpower Corporation, the premier supplier for power system components with one week manufacturing lead time and over 4 million parts in stock. Visit www.interpower.com for more information. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're designing touch free interfaces, 3D printing rockets to carry nanosat satellites, swarming collapsed buildings with cyborg cockroaches, and once again trying to answer what is it that women really want? I could go for a candy bar. A team of researchers at the University of Bristol have developed a new system that provides a touch-free technology interface with feedback. Without any contact with attachments, tools, or the screen itself, Ultra Haptics provides mid-air haptic feedback for digital interaction. Using a phased array of ultrasound transducers, the system creates tactile focal points in space, driven by five driver boards that receive emission patterns from a PC. The tracking system uses a leap motion controller and the feedback is projected through an acoustically transparent display. Air is pushed towards the user's hands as they interact with the display to provide feedback as to their location and function on the screen. The interaction possibilities for ultra haptics include mid-air gestures, tactile information layers, and visually restricted displays. So, the system provides a combination of the Xbox Connect with that air pulse thing from Disney. This system is pretty impressive, but it still doesn't beat watching people play Wii Tennis. It's just not the same without that controller. That's good, I'd heard my elbow crack. <laughs> Researchers from North Carolina State University have developed software that uses a swarm of insect cyborgs to map collapsed buildings. In the field, a swarm of biobots would be equipped with electronic sensors and released into a collapsed building. Think remotely controlled cockroaches. The biobots would initially be allowed to move about randomly, but because they can't be tracked by GPS in certain environments, their precise locations would be unknown. However, the sensors would signal researchers via radio waves whenever biobots got close enough to each other. Once the swarm has had a chance to spread out, the researchers would send a signal commanding the biobots to keep moving until they find a wall or other unbroken surface. Once in place, the bots would begin wall following. Wall following is a popular way of solving simple mazes. Basically, you hug the wall, you solve the maze. Or at least find yourself back at the beginning. Hello? By continually collecting data from the sensors, the software uses an algorithm to translate the data into a rough map of the unknown environment. It could give first responders a good idea of the layout, and if the biobots are strapped to the proper sensors, the software could determine the location of radioactive or chemical threats. How does Hasbro not have the rights to biobots? Someone's getting sued. Students at the University of California, San Diego have tested a 3D printed rocket engine made out of metal. According to the university, this is the first time a university has produced a 3D printed liquid fuel metal rocket engine. The engine was primarily financed by NASA's Marshall Space Center and printed by Illinois-based GPI Prototype and Manufacturing Services. Designed to power the third stage of a rocket carrying several nanosat-style satellites, the engine is six to seven inches long and weighs about 10 pounds. It runs on kerosene and liquid oxygen and generates up to 200 pounds of thrust. Manufacturing costs for the cobalt and chromium design come in around $6,800. NASA pitched in $5,000 and the students were able to raise the rest on their own. The students were kind enough to post a static fire system run through with both liquid nitrogen and water. Let's see the nitrogen test first. Whoa. Whoa. That's so cool. I particularly like the color commentary. <laughs> now to the water. 3D printed metal rocket engines have the potential to drastically cut the cost of future launches. University of Delaware researchers are taking on one of the world's most perplexing problems to ever hit mankind. What's going on inside a woman's mind? 
harrowing, I should know, but assistant professor Chad Forbes was awarded a multi-year $791,000 grant from the National Science Foundation to find out why only a third of STEM doctoral degrees are awarded to women. And why, even though a mere 25% of the job market is female, women are more likely to report job dissatisfaction. Combining neuroscience with social psychology, he's trying to understand how stereotype threat impacts women and minorities, why they leave the STEM fields, and how this trend can be reversed. Stereotype threat happens because our society tends to reinforce stereotypes, such as women aren't good at math. For many females, they encounter this stereotype in the world and often reflect upon it during stressful situations. The situational stressors can become a detriment to their performance and even reinforce the stereotype inadvertently. Forbes wants to know how different parts of the brain are talking to each other, and whether some women are better at shutting off or tuning out the negativity than others. Well, good luck getting inside those minds, Forbes. Godspeed. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in our next episode. For the pd and channel, I'm Megan Zimba, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. Still go for that candy bar. Beans? Ah. Oh. Hello? Oh.